Good morning. It is a new day. We are working in the shop and we are working on the YJ. Why, you might ask? We need the transfer case out of it because Chris, our beloved friend Chris, exploded the transfer case on the banana at the record games. Too soon, Junior. We have the banana in here. We are going to, I'd like to do a little diagnostics before we just start pulling parts out and see exactly what the damage is. So we're gonna get it up on the lift. We're gonna look at it and see what's broken. That is very methodical for you, man. I'm a very methodical man. So I got it up in the air. I'm able to like do a little bit of diagnostics right off the bat. And I think we've shattered this front differential. The transfer case may not be the problem. Hmm. I wasn't around there. I haven't talked to anybody that actually witnessed it. I didn't see anything. Hey, edit out who did it. I don't know who did it. I was not here. I did not even get up this morning. We have sheared the ring and pinion on the front. Sheared teeth off, right? You, you think you got... Yeah, I think it's teeth. I think it's the... Teeth. Ring yeah. gear and pinion gear are somewhat, have been defeathered. It's probably not the transfer case. It's probably the front differential. Oh, you didn't tell. We're still troubleshooting here, so I'm checking. I'm checking my locking hubs here. Right there, that's where they're missing. Okay, let's pull that cover off. Right, I firmly believe we're gonna see chunked gears in here. That's what I think we're gonna see. Yeesh. <clears throat> you see in there? Oh yeah, I'm in this one too. Here, let me rotate this around so, so you can look at it. Here they come. There's one of them. I'm gonna put the transmission in neutral so we can check out the transfer case. I'm thinking the transfer case made it. Okay, can you put the transfer case in four high, please? Okay, now go to neutral. That's neutral. Okay, four low. That's four low. Transfer case made it. It's good? Yeah. We were planning on upgrading the front axle to a Dana 60, but we didn't want to do it under duress. Which, we are under duress. Because you wanted to take this to Easter Jeep so far. I do, really bad. Okay. We got a lot going on. We, yeah, we got a lot. So, right now our only functioning vehicle is the, the Morver. The Morver. You want to do the axle upgrade though, not swap gears. She, yeah. Okay. All right, so the transfer case made it. In fact, everything made it except for the ring and pinion gears. We are building a Dana 60 for this and we're putting it in and we're doing it on the double. Under duress. Under duress, just like we said we weren't gonna do. All right, we interrupt working on the banana axle to work on the wrecker, but that's not what we're gonna show you today. Jamie, what are you working on today? I'm working on cleaning up the shop. And I found these that a fan brought to, sent to us, so I'm gonna start installing those. <laughs> So we got the hooks up and we are going to continue on this mess. Lizzie's going to help me and we're just going to throw stuff in the garbage. What? Basically. All right, I've done just about everything I can do today. Look how clean this is. You can actually see the table. Tom said that's the first time since he's been here that he's seen the table. So we're just pouring the fluid into the transmission and then we're gonna take it on a little test drive. And then, banana front axle because I'm missing the banana. Time to get the wrecker out of here and get the banana back in, start working on it. So what we have here is a 1999 Super Duty front axle. It's a Dana 60, it's a high pinion. It's way beefier than the Dana 44 that we have in the banana, and we keep breaking it. Now that we don't breaking axles anymore, we broke the ring and pinion. This will be a solution to that. The problem is it's too wide, 
So we're gonna be narrowing it. There's another consideration with these axles too. The knuckles on these are hard to weld to and there's not a lot of aftermarket support for them. So we're gonna be converting the, the knuckles and the C's and everything to the later style on uh, Super Duty, like the 05 and newer. That's gonna be easy because we're narrowing it anyway. Are you ready to do this, Lizzie? I sure am, let's get after it. It's a little bit cold in here because it's raining outside, but we're grateful for the rain. And we have a new helper today. This is Jamie. <laughs> Jamie is really interested in helping work on her off-road rig, which means she's got to learn how to weld. <laughs> so today she's welding. Not we're not working on her. Not be pretty. We're not working on the YJ <laughs> today. What we're working on is a stand to put the axle on so we can work on it. So this is not very critical welding. It's a great place to start. Let's get after it. All right. Tom got this metal cut out right here. We're going to make these into the little holders for the axle. And then Jamie's just going to weld them together. Okay. Are you giving me any tips or anything? There are no tips. If I, how am I supposed to learn if you don't teach me? That's exactly how it works. I disagree. Tom's gonna come I'll give you some tips. tips. Yeah, that's not how you learn. That's horrible. Okay. So let me let me show you really fast. <laughs> <laughs> we got it. Oh. Okay, put okay. this on. Here. Nice. Ooh, See how easy? That even looks good. So now just fill in the hole right there. My 20 hot. You always start north of where you are and go across it. Whoa. What happened there? I missed it. It welded. It, it, you caught it. Why'd you say whoa? Well, did you hear it blast yeah. through? Oh, so it went through the metal, so yeah. I was on it too long? But it saved, yeah. That was an interesting technique. I couldn't see it very well. <laughs> Can I have a new teacher? Uh-oh. <laughs> there could okay. be. These are going to be our things. Jamie's coming right along. All right, Jamie, so how'd it really go? I think... I need some practice and maybe a new teacher. Oh boy, bites first day. I don't want to get in the middle of this, <laughs> but that looks great. It might hold. That's it's gonna work. Matters, it's gonna right? work. Awesome. Oh. This is how these work. That's actually just phase one of how they work. Jamie, push the button. gonna cut this big old bracket off. Tom's gonna take the hubs apart. Jamie's gonna wait for more welding. time has never come today and I guess it just finally got here all right we're back from lunch we've actually been back for a minute we've been doing some work got these ends cleaned up got them cut down where they are Tom's actually been working on that we are gonna be pulling the cover off here and we're gonna see what's inside 
What, what do you think's in there? Okay. Well, look at that. Just a two spider carrier. All right, I so guess. So what are we putting in? What's in the banana? 538s. 538s and a grizzly locker? All right. So let's pop this out. Let's take this apart. All the way? Yeah, pretty much. And then we can clean this whole housing. No. ours in and forget about it set it and forget it like an easy bake oven easy bake easy bake fast as you can All right, we're gonna get this cleaned up and then we're gonna do whatever we want to next. We got a little welding to do on this. We gotta set up gears, we gotta set up the locker. In no particular order. C's, knuckles. <laughs> we're waiting on mail. Mail, oh. Don't tell them that, they don't like to hear that. They do not like that. Parts are coming. So we got this housing all cut down, cleaned up, ready to assemble. About ready to drop this in, where it goes. Piece number one. There it is. Looks great, good job. Okay, we're gonna press some races in and start setting up this rear end. Now, setting up gears is a tedious, boring, uninteresting process. And it's kind of black magic. Everybody's got their own recipe and way of doing it. Yes, So we don't have any of the correct tools to do it, so they're gonna see a lot of hammering and hacking, but we're gonna get it done. We always do. Yeah, yes. And. Oh, to make this more interesting, this is going to be a musical. Oh, we're singing the whole time? Yep. What's the first song? It's a musical. You burst into song. You don't plan it. We're going to get this done. And it's going to be a lot of fun. Let's set the pinion dab. <laughs> okay, hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Uh-oh. Oh, never mind. I know what I'm doing. Okay, so earlier I put these races in the freezer. I don't know if it's enough to make a difference, but when you make these cold, they shrink and they fit in better. I don't have anything I need here. <sighs> Do we have um, a set of bearing press things? Those aluminum pucks to push the bearings in? I think that's a no. There's gonna be a couple comments how this should be brass, and it probably should be, but it's not. It's not. <laughs> this is this is some uh, cold rolled steel. As steel goes, it's you know better than hot rolled. What's the yeah, difference? Try it's a, try it, my engineer's on the phone. But my point is. Um, the bearing race is significantly harder than this, so there's nothing I can do to damage it. I think it seats all the way pretty good. Yep. Did that have any shims under it? Um, just that one. Oh, I can't see. I can't tell. I can't tell if that's a shim or if yeah, that's... Yeah, I peeked at it too. So I'm, we'll just start with none and see. Let's see what happens. Okay. Okay, but I guess let's put the other race in, get that thing, get that ready to go uh, first. Flip it over, yeah. All right, this is the locker that we're putting in here. Matt likes these in all of his front axles. This is a Grizzly locker from Yukon. So you don't have to engage it, they're automatic. Uh, it, just, it just works when it needs to. And for recovery work, that is awesome to not have to fiddle with switches or worry about airlines or anything. So this is what he uses in all of his recovery rigs. In the front. 
in the front. In the back, it's different. All bets are off. Jamie, would you like to learn how to set up a gear? Sure. It's, like a, it's, gonna go, it's gonna go on right here. All right, that's all pulled on now. No, it has to. That's how it, I'll spin it for you. Does it look like it's all good? Yep, looks like it's seated. I'm going to get these pressed in. These are the axle seals. They go right there. Are you very specific about the torque you like on these? Yes, I like them to be tight enough. Tight enough. <laughs> I knew it. He's picky like that sometimes. Let me show you. Let me show you a cool feature about these. So when you're poking these axle shafts in, you're like, you know, you're jamming them in here as hard as you can. They make these seals. They've got this little receiver on them, so that it puts them in there and centers them before you before they go on like that. So you still want to be careful because you could you could cut them or nick them with these splines, but that's what that's for. I got this seal from Yukon Gear. <laughs> Jamie, did you hear the great news? We're getting no. a new drill press. Woohoo! Tom's been wanting one forever. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. It's coming in a couple of weeks. Custom made. First one ever. He was complaining about the old one, and I told him, you're the shop manager, just throw it away. <laughs> and he wouldn't do it. I didn't know that was an option. I can just throw I, it away. Huh? I'm pretty sure I told you to get rid of it and oh, get a new one. All right. You're going to come in here and there's going to be holes in things. You're going to be like, how'd they do that? <laughs> That's the problem. That's what I'm worried about. Okay. That should press that in there, Jamie. So it's pressing that bearing into there? No, nope, we're pressing this seal into there. Oh, okay. There it is. We pressed it right in there. Perfectly pressed in. So I've never had a nice press tool like this. And the only reason I have this tool is because Paul Cox from Fab Rats accidentally ordered two of them. And I went to his <laughs> shop and I'm like, hey, that's a cool tool. He's like, you want one? I ordered an extra one. So I got this from him. And I've used it several times now. And I'm like, I should have bought one of these a long time ago. So thanks, Paul, for accidentally ordering two. It's always good to remember to put these seals in before you get the whole thing set up and buttoned up. I personally have never made that mistake, but I know that I'm prone to those type of mistakes. It's tight, so we're gonna take Hello, this off now. Melissa? Except for I don't know how he gets it off with all. There we go. I just got off the phone with Alyssa from American Iron. She's the one that their American Iron's the one that makes the all the knuckles and the C's. So she says that there's some tie rod ends that go with this kit that she would really like us to try. So we got those coming too. I just made a finger guillotine. Do you get your finger out of there? Oh, shoot. Okay. So that's how much play we have side to side. So we got to shim that we out. We got to start stacking shims and we'll okay. just do Can we get a feel for how much, like let's shove it one way or the other and let's get a feeler gauge in there and then we know how much, how thick our total shim pack needs to be. Okay. Well, we're not that precise yet. We'll pull that out in a minute. Got a feeler gauge? Yeah, I got what I need. Okay, so these really thin ones we'll save till the end. Yeah. So what I need. Let's try two of those thick ones in there and see if that tightens us up. So I want the I want the thick one. I want that pack on this side. The whole pack? Yeah. Great. It's gonna be too thick. I bet. I bet you now this doesn't now fit. Now we'll go back in. But we'll try it. That'll tap down in. I don't know, it might be too much. Ooh, that feels better, tighter. 
Mm. We're closer. We don't want to set it up too tight. You want to take a... The first time. Let's put a thinner one in there. Here. Just grab that side. Yeah, get me the thickest of the thins. Oh, nice. She did pretty good. That's two of them. That's why it was the thickest of the thins. How are you doing, Tom? Here, I, there's okay. already one right here. I've been better. Here. So that's the thinnest of the thins. Okay, take this one. You have been better. These are all the same, I would say. They're not. There's thousands of an inch. Okay, hey, I like that. went in. All right. Let's let's check the play. Ooh, that's the right lash. That's not correct. So we need another thin one on this side. But what let's, what let's, are you let's, feeling? Lash this, hang on. this way. You got a little bit. That's too much lash. That's not enough lash. Let's get out the thing and measure it. Let's start measuring it. Oh no, don't, oh don't. Are you, you no, we'll measure. Okay. But where's the other thing? I don't want it. I don't want, I don't want it. We don't have one of those things. We do, and I'm gonna find it. We're not gonna use it. Matt's really <laughs> When he's not looking, we're gonna use it. You can check my work. Let's do it that way. All to make right. this interesting, I'm going to set this up by intuition, and then Tom is going to measure it. I like okay. this game. Let's check. Let's get a pattern really quick and check pinion depth right now and see how close we are. So this is gear marking compound. All I care about right now, we're not even, we're not even ready to set up our gear pattern, but I would like to see how close we are. Okay, so um, I'm gonna, you just keep that from spinning. Like this right here, put a, lot, put a lot of resistance on that, or some resistance like that. Let it go, but keep resistance on it. Okay, let's get that around and look and see. All right, that is not good. See that? That's where it's rubbing is clear on the outside here. So let's just spin it the other way. Okay, that one's better, but the depth isn't there. And the depth isn't there because of, we've still got so much play here. So this is our gear pattern here, Tom. We are high in on the outside here and high in in the middle there. So that tells me that the, the pinion is too far. It, it's too, I don't know which way shallow and which way is deep, but it's too far that way. Out, okay, it needs to come in more. Tappy. Tappy, tappy, tappy. That's it. Okay. Ooh, that feels better, tighter. Mm. We're closer. Oh well, we'll get uh, we'll get some indication of what's going on. Look at that. Okay, I'm gonna spin this. Do you want to put constant drag on that? Yeah, constant drag. We gone through it yet? Keep going. Yeah, you're back. You're through. Okay, let's go the other way. Constant okay. drag. <laughs> you're through. Okay, let's look at it. We're still really high on the tooth, aren't we? It helped, but it's not enough. So we're probably going to be using probably the six thousandths. So let's go a little thick on that one. And then we'll thick? put yeah, and we'll put this. How thick? This one right here is nine. Nine thousandths. Uh, but I was thinking five would be. Let's try nine. Let's 
try nine. That's a little thick. Yep, that's okay. a little thick. I have a, I have a, you have I, have a, a plan? I have a plan. Cause I'm gonna put a thick one in there, and then we're gonna tighten this up on with this a thick side. side. It's on this side to move it that way. That way a little bit. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. I think this was assembly time four. That was our fourth. Yeah, fourth attempt. Okay, so we feel like nine I feel. Three. I feel like three thousandths is the right is amount. Is the lucky amount? Mm -hmm. All right, so oh, we oh, talked to American good. Iron today, and I think this is the parts. This is what we've been waiting for. Oh yeah. Check it out. Oh those man. Are, those are Right on the end. We got to make sure and get these right side up. <laughs> yes. Which would be this way. Oh, oh, oh. How's fit? That looks really fun. All right, I'm really excited that these came. So both of these parts come from American Iron. And they go like this. Like that. Then we can turn. Jeez. And this is going on the banana? Yeah, yeah, this is huge for the banana. So we just found out what we're never going to break again on the banana. These. Well, we're going to break something else. <laughs> this day in the 60s should give us no trouble. This should be good for a long time. All right, so now that we've got our pinion depth correct, we are going to start doing, we're going to work on the bearing preload, which is another really boring process of assemble, disassemble, assemble, disassemble. We'll come back after we get it right. How many times was that before we got the preload we right? We lost count, like 11. <laughs> it wasn't that many, but we got it right. We had it too tight, we had it too loose, and now it is perfect. But we don't have the tool to measure it to know that it's perfect. It just feels perfect. Let's see. That, right there. You're supposed to give it a flick and it won't spin, it just stops. That's a really... All right. That's how hillbillies do it. Yeah, so now the next thing we've got to do is make sure to get our gear lash perfect and get, and get the preload onto the side bearings right here. So we're just about ready to... Uh, we've, we've got some more messing to do. All right. It's going to be crazy boring. We're going to drop this in and take it out and drop it in and take it out. When we get it right, we'll come back and tell you about it. So we got the bearing preload done. The lash is set up so all the shims, all the permanent bearings are in. We're going to tighten down the caps and just check everything and then bolt the cover on this and stuff some rags in there and start working on the rest of it. Also, hitting them with the hammer makes them settle in. <laughs> Little joke there. You've been relieved. Oh no. So I don't know a lot about like torque specs. I just know what it feels like. That feels good. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be able to tell you the number that is. But if you check it with a torque wrench, I think you'll find me pleasantly surprised. All right, what Tom is expertly doing is he's applying the marking compound, the gear pattern compound, so that we can get the final pattern pattern. I'm gonna put a happy little yellow flower in here. Let's decide, maybe there's a happy tree. He lives right there. What do you tell people when they say they don't have any talent? That's just a bunch of baloney. Talent is a pursued interest. Do you know who said that? Mr. Rogers. That guy's a genius. For those of you that are wondering what in the world we're doing now, how we're getting the pattern is we're adding resistance to this so as the gears interface, it wipes some of the compound off of there and we'll be able to see exactly where that is. All right, I'm the resistance. Now we're gonna get it. So we just marked the coast side of the gear and now we're marking the drive side of the gear. All right, you're through. Okay. Let's 
See how we did? Oh, look at that. So this is the drive side. So those marks are pretty center in the gear. They're down off of the tip. That is not a bad pattern. Now let's look at the other side. The coast side I'm less proud of. It's a little bit high into the outside, but for this application, we're going with it. You get what you get. You get what you get. Let's put the cover on this. Let's, let's measure. Let's measure the uh, oh, you want to final. Yeah. So what do you got? Four thousandths. Four? Four and a half thousandths. Are you making it four because you said four? Look. It's four and a half thousandths. Yeah. Okay. We're right there. Could be five. Four, four <laughs> and four point eight thousandths. <laughs> All right. Well, that's really good. So the only thing we don't know is how many inch pounds of preload. Nope. We guessed. We, but that feels pretty good. Feels pretty good. Okay, well, let's glue this thing on. So since we're loading this with Yukon gears and a Yukon locker, fitting. it's fitting that we top it off with a Yukon cover. All right, we're going to get this cover put on, and then we're going to get to the next step. We'll show you what that is. Now what you're working on. So we've got those C's that we need to put on, the inner knuckle, and they don't quite slide on all the way. So we're gonna keep on grinding on this for a minute until they fit on nice. We don't need them to press fit. Don't worry about that. got the chunks of this off that should allow us to get in to where we need to be for the narrowed axles that we have so the seeds gonna fit in here now and there's plenty of room to weld in there we have come to a point where we're about ready to do something finally after three or four days of working on this we're finally ready to do something and that is we're gonna weld Tom is gonna weld that C to that axle. We're nervous because they're super hard to redo once you do them. Yeah, once it's on there, we're probably never gonna move it. Oh, by the way, we have a deadline to meet. We've got EJS coming right up, and this has to be done for EJS because I think we might be doing a little test drive thingy. Oh, so. yeah, you got your XJ. Yeah, Colt's got the, he's got uh, Rat's Nest, and Rudy's got the Rudicon. And I think we're gonna do a little XJ trail. This has to be clear out here like this. Oh yeah? Yeah. So, 47 years of doing projects like this has yet to teach me that I can't get as much done in a day as I think I can. <laughs> so I was planning on this being bolted under the banana today. Didn't happen. But we made some progress. The gears are set up, happy with that. You gotta um, be happy with that. You yeah. got the gears set up. We're, you got these figured out where you want them. We yeah. gotta figure out a way to make them stick. <laughs> so. Good, good progress today. I think it's time to clean up the tools and go home and we will see you here tomorrow. All right, we are back. It's the next day. We went to sleep and woke up. Uh, Lizzie's not here today. She's got some appointment branding calves or something. Oh yeah, cowgirl stuff. Cowgirl stuff. While Tom's getting suited up, ready to do some welding, I'm gonna tell you what we know. We know that this is the center line of the lower link, plus or minus. So it's gonna come right off there at a, about a, I don't know, 13 degree angle. I'm gonna figure that out for sure in a second. This is the center line of the upper link. This is the center line of the other upper link. Now these are 37 inch tires. I should know this because I should have already done the math, but I didn't. 37 divided by four equals 9.25. So the ideal minimum separation between the center of this joint and the center of this joint in a vertical plane is 9.25. 9 9.25. So if we can get this in that range, that would be great. If we can't, 
it will be a compromise. I really can't do anything meaningful here until this is welded and cool. So let's light up the old torch. Yeah. All right, we're up to temperature. This thing's almost 300 degrees. We're gonna start welding on it. Well, I don't think you need to, do you think you need the, more heat? This, I don't even need more heat. I just don't, I did not like this. Out of position. Yeah. We're gonna do a little more welding with the nickel 55 rod, and then I think we're gonna move on to the MIG welder. First time ever hooking a ground up. How'd you do? Got it on the third try. That's a little better. How are we doing, no cracks? Let's see. No cracks, that is beautiful. Are these looking better? Better? I got some fresh slag hammers here for you. Two different options. Oh wow. Metal or wood. You know what Tom's gonna do with the wood? He's gonna burn the handle and burnish it all up. That's what he does. That yep. sounds about right. I'm gonna stain it. It's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be custom. I love it. Okay, perfect. Good timing. Thanks, man. There you go, guys. So we laid that down. We'll lay down another bead up here on the top. And then it'll be good enough. Once you'll be mint. Right. So it lays down a lot of weld fast. It's not very good out of position. Okay. Keeping the temps up. Okay, here's the magic. What well, fingers are getting hot? Geez, I'm holding the rod. Uh -oh. Chippy. Oh, you want me to chippy chippy? Chippy chippy. Let's see what we got. I'm happy with it. We got the first side welded up, now we're moving on to the other side. Break on through to the other side. It's a musical, remember? Oh yeah. All right, Tom's got these all welded up. I'm super happy with how they look. Tom is not as happy. <laughs> Definitely not. They look strong to me. That's all I'm looking at. So we got to get this up in position, figure out where our brackets go for our lower links. I want those welded on. And then we can get the banana up on the lift, drop this axle out of the way. We'll add the words later. He's just going to mime it all out. Yes. Let's, uh, yeah, just pick it up and set it on. Centered up. Pretty dang close, man. I need a bunch of measuring devices. See what Tom's doing to me? He's making me use measuring devices. <laughs> and it's working. Uh, it needs to go in a little bit. Yeah, more, more, more. It does? More. It needs to be slightly shallower than that, which it slightly is. Okay. 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 Oh, it's 
So what do you think? Just MIG weld these like crazy? I'd stick them. Actually, I'd make them. But I don't want... What do you want me to do? What I don't want to do is I don't want them to crack and then get... Fall off. Have to get polished out. So, I think the problem is, is you can't downhill weld. Downhill's really tough with that. Okay, let me try my MIG technique on these. Yeah, what do you... Go okay. for it. Because all I've ever done is make them. All right. I've got an old farmer's trick up my sleeve. Okay, old farmer it is. cracking right now that's our one criteria for success <laughs> we only have one I filled a hole that hole was not big around you did put remember you called there. mine lumpy oh yeah that's where this is going up <laughs> okay I just want to do that on the other one yeah oh, man my teachers would have yelled at you <laughs> yeah they would have yelled at me for that <laughs> These need to be welded right here. Zip, yeah, zip. Yeah, so where did, nice. where did um, Tom, where did you do your welds at? All of the other ones. On stick? These were all oh. stick. So these are super strong. These ones are important. The links that hold the whole axle in aren't as important. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> we just want the axle to stay together. We don't need it to stay in. <laughs> an axle is an axle independent of the Jeep. I don't want your axle coming apart. Colin, these were my welds. Inspect my welds. That is hot. I can feel it. I, well, I welded these all together. We, we've been abusing those brackets and they and are holding up good. Together. They are staying together. All right, we are back at it as promised. So Tom's over there drilling some holes in some metal. Tom's over there cutting some metal in half so he can drill holes in it. That's our bracket here. And yep. Here. Yeah, we got to get those up there. So I'm gonna finish welding this on, and then we're gonna mock this up. So yeah, this little bit of welding I have left here is really the only welding left to do outside. Okay, we're just gonna get after it. Next time you see us, we'll be doing something else. Okay, um, I think we need to just take this off of here, get the banana on the lift. Oh, I already showed you earlier. Yeah, this time you had sound effects. Last time it was all mining. Okay, we got the banana up in the air. We're going to start taking it apart, get the front axle out, and then figure it out. What's your question? So what's your limiting strap on the banana? Does it just land on the horries? Yeah. So if we undo those, it'll drop out of here. Yeah, we got to disconnect. We got to get the brake calipers off. We've got to get the hydraulic ram off and get those all zip tied up to the body. Then we can undo the links and the bottom of the ORIs, and we're done. Brake calipers, huh? Yep. So we got Ed's apartment pretty much done and it had a shower curtain and one of our viewers has a shower glass door company it's Scott Olson from Silver Fox Glass he's up in the Salt Lake area but he came down and put a door in for Ed's shower should we go look at it yeah it looks great let's go look at it yeah they did a great job nice glass door it works great Better than a curtain, I guess. Yeah. That was just a quick little update. That was super cool. He came down here, brought all his stuff, got that mounted up in a hurry. And uh, yeah, thank you. Big thanks to Scott Olson and Silver Fox Glass for coming down and making Ed's shower that much better. Now back to whatever this is. All the link mounts are removed. The Ori's are really the only thing holding this on. We're gonna unhold them. 
Lowering? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Good okay, stop. This is the price of the record games. Well, I yeah. think it was just its time. There was there was a lot of abuse before that. Woo. Have you seen this? This is the Matt's Off-Road Recovery Kid wearing Fab Rats gear. This is the Fab Rats Kid wearing Rusty Fork and Matt's Off-Road. Mm -hmm. Paul, Michelle, you gotta get your kids under control. What about you? Jamie, you gotta get your kids under control. <laughs> That's okay. Hmm. We got a problem. It's gonna need to lift up under here. Tom. So those rubber ones don't have a lot of misalignment before they start getting tricky. So we're gonna have to get pretty dang low to get them in there. So that's it slipping up that because it was pulsating. I'm like, I wonder why that's pulsating. I'm kind of imagining air going through channels with oil in them, but it's the whole plunger just uh, uh. from C to shining C. Maybe we should get in there when we're done and just weld that. What's one one little thin little bead? All right. Okay. Brett, I need. Nice and sharp. Man, that makes accent really good. What are we doing? Two and a two and a quarter. That'll give us plenty of room. Two and a quarter. Two and a quarter. Moving some metal. That was supposed to be half inch. I've got to make these again. It's okay, I can make these twice. You have plenty of material. I do, I have plenty of material. There they go. Wow. They gonna fit? Yeah, they'll fit. We just gotta go clear down. So we're working on the banana now. The record games are over. But even at that, we have a limited number of these shirts left on our website. We also have these stickers. If you flip them over, look how good they look on this side. I've just been informed that when you buy a shirt, you get a sticker for free. So check us out online, mattsoffroadrecovery.com. Is this? Are you pretty much using the full height or do you need to cut it to size? Just doing small. Okay, now do this other side. Okay. Now, now comes the fun part. Figuring out why this doesn't fit. It fits, man. It ain't gonna. No? So there's your center line. That's, That's where it goes. Too tall? Uh, it, uh, might be, it might be too tall, but it's definitely... A smaller axle diameter. Yeah. So that, I, I, guess, I guess, weld it up. Good enough to cut these tabs off. What, whatever you need to do to make this set pretty good. So we got these brackets from Barnes, these lower brackets, these upper brackets. This is a huge time saver when it comes to building these things. 
You can see I built those ones on the other one. These are just stronger and just better engineered. Not that those ones didn't work, but these ones are gonna work better. All right, we've got this welded together pretty solid now. We're gonna fit it in there, see how we need to trim it to make it work. All right. Definitely gonna need a little trim in front and back to drop down in here. All right, we stopped working on the banana for a minute. All of us are here. Look at that. Because guess whose birthday it is? It's Hefe's birthday. So we're here at Black Bear Diner and we're just eating steak. And what do you got there? I got a big omelet. Got to go with the steak. So if if Hefe's the Hefe and I'm the old guapo, I think Hefe and all these. What can I say of such men for the sweater? We are out of time. I was hoping to have this sitting on its wheels, but it's not. That's how it goes. You never get as much done as you think. We've been talking about this for 47 years. I think that I can get more done in a day than I really can. And even though I get taught every day that I can't, I still wake up every morning thinking I can get more done in a day than I can. One day it's gonna happen. You're going to do day. everything that you wanted to do in a day. Odds are. They're <laughs> slowly going more and more in my favor. Yeah, every day. Huh? Numerically, yes. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> until then. All right. So big thanks to Yukon Gear. We love their product. We've been using it and everything. Good product. Good, yeah, good axle company. shafts, differentials, gears. Lockers, yeah. Yep. We've got the Grizzly locker in here. Barnes yeah. four-wheel drive. Awesome. We're using the brackets for this. Um, they sent these a while back when I said that I was going to eventually be doing a 60 and they're like, here, here's some brackets that'll make that go easier. And it did. Oh yeah, for sure. If you want to put a Dana 60 in your Jeep Cherokee, you can go to Barnes 4-Wheel Drive and enter the promo code MORE for 10% off at checkout. Great company, Connor and Brad. Awesome. Just straight up. Guys. Barnes4WD.com. Yeah, we also want to thank American Iron. They sent the inner C and the outer part of the knuckle. These are huge, beefy parts. They're going to make this thing so strong, we will never have any issues in the future. We turned a 99 differential into a 05. 2005 plus. Yeah. yeah. So what do you guys think we ought to do with this thing? Normally, we run over to Slip Lock when we're all finished. We could do that again, or we could go somewhere else. Let us know in the comments. We got the maze. We've got the chute. We've got the Slip Lock trail. Triple sevens, we just saw at the record game. We could do triple sevens with it. Let us know. I'll show you. We'll do it. And as always, thanks for watching.